Hello, beautiful souls. Good to see you. We are sitting outside here in uh, Melissa's backyard. It is gorgeous and it is beautiful. And we've had some good news that's come in today. The good news is that we have officially found our house in California. Yay! It literally is at the time that it feels like it's, it's, it's go time. And so the word has been given us that it is made available and we back onto a national forest. We have a lot of land and we have a lot of space to create, to grow our plants, to finish off our project of the ump, and to literally just have a hub space, like a hub space to literally launch and, and extend into the rest of the world and share with the rest of the world. So it's very, very, very exciting for all of us. Um, we are truly secure in our purpose with each other and with God. And so it is going to be beautiful to see what comes forward from this. Um, but uh, the thing about it is we are stepping into this new adventure with nothing. We literally have nothing. Like since, you know, before this we were living in Canada. And so all my stuff is in Canada. Everything that made up our kitchen, our home, our space, our bodies are everything in this world and so it's literally like um the experience that jesus speaks of when it's sell everything you have to the poor and come follow me i feel that that's exactly what our life has been bit by bit and undoing and unraveling um a letting go of like the misery and and stepping into reason and into purpose and through this transition, I've really recognized the power of decision and the power of choice um, that needs to come from this. And I've been able to really recognize um, that this plan is God's. This plan is God's. I'm not planning this. And I can have complete trust and faith in God because it is his plan and because I am his child. And so I'm starting to have everything that I've seen in my mind and speak of in word fall to form and into my experience. And so because of that, I guess it's that whole, you know, by ye fruits ye shall know them. And they shall know themselves. By their fruits ye shall know them. And they shall know themselves. It's the fruits, it's the effects, it's the um, experience of these miracle principles and the forgiveness lessons. It's not just talking about it. It's not just seeing it in the head. It's not just like, oh yeah, this is so true, this is so right. What of course the miracle says is so on point. It goes far beyond that. And to me, I feel that our greatest lessons are in our relationships and our need to allow our special relationships to be transformed into holy relationships. And this isn't just for some relationships. It's for all of our relationships. So if we are even withholding love, reason, sanity, forgiveness to one person, we have lost sight of everything. Completely lost sight of the goal of God. Because either we are seeing with God or we are seeing against God. And if we are holding one person as having done something wrong or still sinful in some way, even if we're doing it to ourselves, if we hold one person still sinful, then we are not seeing as God does. God sees all of his children as perfectly equal and perfectly innocent. So the only way that we are to remember him and to know what our part is in his plan and to create with our brothers in him is to allow our mind to be healed through forgiveness so that we can look upon all of our brothers as God does. And that means seeing all of our brothers as innocent, seeing all of our brothers as free, seeing all of our brothers as happy. That means not condemning a single part of this world, not any government, not any religion, not any country, not any person, not any race, not anything that anyone has done or not done. There's no judgment here. Judgment is not a part of the equation of God. Some people will say, yeah, well, what is the last judgment? Um, uh, people speak of the last judgment, that God has the last judgment. This is true. But God's final judgment on all of us is that we are wholly innocent and we are his children. That we have never left heaven. That he has given us everything. And that the effects of his gifts are pure joy, without opposite. This is his judgment and this is his promise and it will stay this way for all eternity. 
because what is sane and what is true and what is knowledge is eternal and what is true and what is knowledge is eternal and does not change and so it'll always be what it is God will always be what he is he can never change we can never change the only thing that changes is our thoughts about what we think we are what we think the truth is and what we think God is that's what can change so it's almost as if we are learning how to step into our changeless reality our changeless reality so that we can experience it here be it here it's here now heaven is here now and this is a state of being, it's a state of mind. It's a purpose. And with this move, it's going to be Tom and me and Ted. And Ted Poppy is actually the publisher of The Sparkly of A Course of Miracles and the giver of the gifts of medicinal marijuana. And joining with him has allowed our projects of Makeshift and The Ump and The Center for the One and all our projects that we're doing to join with his projects and literally serve the world. And so I'm finding here that I think what brought that back up again was the, the reminder of the talk that Ted and I had the other day in regards to forgiveness and truly just the practicality of forgiveness, like how practical forgiveness is. Forgiveness literally is a corrective tool. It is a corrective tool in our perception. Forgiveness literally changes our mind so that we're no longer seeing the world through the five senses of the body so that we're no longer seeing the world according to how the world made it or how man made it instead we're seeing through vision we're seeing through the spiritual eye we're looking upon the real world heaven that is here and now but we will only see the effects of it the fruits of it in our life when we change our mind about what life is to me life capital l is synonymous with that the eternal it is synonymous with truth and sanity and knowledge. And this world, this world of man, is our perception. It's a dream. It's an idea. It's nothing more than that. We are simply noticing the effects of that idea. So, of course, the world right now is going to be suffering and in pain and sinful because this is the thought of separation here. Change the thought to unity and all the world changes. And that's what's happening, unity and community and communication and coming together. Hi. Realizing the only purpose of the Holy Spirit is communication. Hello, darling. Hi. <laughs> Here we are. Thank you. <laughs> See, even Tom recognizes the purpose of the Holy Spirit is communication and only communication. And so we're learning how to have communication reestablish in our mind with God and with our brothers and sisters. And the way to allow this communication to be reestablished is through forgiveness. And so forgiveness is the healing of the mind. It's literally the corrective tool. And what forgiveness does is it aligns the heart with the mind and a single purpose. Forgiveness aligns the heart and the mind with a single purpose. That's what it does. That's what its function is. And so when we let forgiveness in, when we welcome forgiveness instead of being afraid of it, it literally is applied to our thinking so that we're no longer seeing ourselves as separate or just this body or weak or um, in need or in lack or in pain. When we let all of those thoughts and stories and current you know, experiences here be given to the light and given to the truth and given to the Holy Spirit for forgiveness and healing. What happens is this, this shift, this change, this correction that takes place. A literal reversal of thinking. It's as if the light turns on and you can finally see. And this forgiveness answers all questions, it solves all problems, and it shows us the innocence of everyone and in everything. We are free in forgiveness. We are holy in forgiveness. We are powerful in forgiveness. But we have to recognize that forgiveness is what we want. Forgiveness is the means and happiness is the goal. Joy is the goal. And the thing that's amazing is God joins us in this goal of happiness. God joins us in this goal of peace. This is what he wills for us. And what we will with God is one. 
So we will happiness for ourselves too, but this happiness includes all of our brothers, every single one. Yes, that one too, that one just popped in your head. And yes, that one too, the one that just popped in your head. All of them, everyone, strangers, friends, family, neighbors, those have passed on, those who are still here. Those who have done evil deeds, those ones who've seen to be the saints. The children and the elderly, those who are in between. If you believe in those on other planets, them too. It includes everyone. This is an infinite, ever-expanding universe of creation. Life, capital L, eternal in all of us. And so what we are doing is reconnecting with that part of us and living from there. That part that joins us, that unites us in love, in harmony, in peace, cooperation, communication. This is what we want in all relationships. So we have to let our minds be healed from all thoughts of separation, of thinking we know what relationships are for, of thinking that we can choose between relationships. We can't choose between relationships. We don't love one more than another. We don't love one different than another. If we think we do, we don't know what love is. Love is God's love all-inclusive, changeless. And so I am grateful for the means by which to recognize I am free. We are free. So let's give our mind in service to the atonement, brother and sister souls. The at one meant where forgiveness is applied to our thinking. We change the source of our thinking from fear to love through the guidance of the loving Holy Spirit. Our willingness must join with his. Our vision must join with his. Our will must join with his. For in that joining is God, is our freedom, is our sanity, is our joy. And I want this for all of us. And so this is the real only purpose with which I share. And again, every time I share, I hear the message that is on my heart. And it re-reminds me of my goal and my purpose that I share with all of you. This single purpose with which forgiveness brings so let's let all problems, all purposes, collapse into one. So that the solution may, given us, may be given us in a way that we can recognize, understand, receive, and say yes to. So that our mind remains fully focused on the purpose, on the goal, remembering that God is my goal, happiness is my goal, and they are synonymous. Forgiveness is my key to happiness. And so I will use this in my daily life, in my daily practice, on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Remembering that if I get knocked off peace, if I forget who I am, if I burst in anger or fear or sadness, I can recognize this as a call to help in me, a call to love in me, and refuse to turn to anyone else, anywhere else, blame anyone else and turn here and listen and see the truth about me and God and all of my holy brothers and sisters and the truth that we share together as one. Well. Let this be our practice. Let this be our prayer. Let this be our celebration. It's time to celebrate that there is an answer to every perceived problem. There is a solution to every complication or conflict. And in our holy minds, the guide has been given, the way has been given, the answer has been given. We just have to say yes and thank you and receive the gifts that have been given us. And all that's required is being still, being quiet humbly opening to listen and to receive so that we can give and receive even more. Let's let the laws of God replace the laws of man. 
the mind of God, replace the ego mind, and the truth of love be the power and the energy and the gift of everything that we do and see and be and give here. So I love you all beautiful souls. I'm glad I followed the inspiration to pick up the camera again and be outside and hear the birds and be grateful to God for what we are. And so thank you, blessed holy brothers and sisters. Let's remember that there is a reason to be used in our mind, forgiveness to be experienced in our mind, and gifts to receive in our mind so that we can give them and continually be in the state of happiness that God wills for us. Happiness and abundance, beautiful souls. It's our eternal right. <laughs> our eternal right. God bless all of you. I love you. Bye.